Talk about the foresight that you had to take upon yourself to learn the things that weren't being taught earlier in your life. Well, earlier in my life, I guess I was always a curious person. Um, I had an older cousin who visited me, visited me when I was about six years old, taught me how to make model airplanes. So I grew up making model airplanes, and that motivated me to go to the school and uh, also to go to the library and get some books and learn more about it. And then I found out about Civil Air Patrol. Most people never hear talk about Civil Air Patrol, but it was the first volunteer organization in the United States and started around the Second World War. And they had a cadet program, which took uh, young people from ages 12 through 22. And uh, I joined Civil Air Patrol as a cadet, and that's how I learned about fly uh, the actual flying air airplanes. They had a whole <clears throat> bunch of uh, surplus airplanes that they had bought after the Second World War. And so I started flying with them and uh, soloed an airplane in six and a half hours. So I went on from there to uh, study more and uh, get my licenses. And um, basically worked my way into the aviation industry as flight instructor. What was it like, you know, working with, um, when you first started over at uh, Western Airlines, what was that experience? How, how did it go about? How did it transpire? And you know, just tell about us about those experiences. Well, as you know, around that time, uh, most things were relatively prejudiced. Uh, so um, I just happened to be um, thinking about going to uh, one of the other airlines to check it out. Which I did. I applied to Pan Am, uh, United, um, and all the other major carriers, TWA. But um, when I went to Flying Tigers, which was a cargo outfit at that time, uh, they were the ones who uh, gave me an interview. So uh, I took their Stanine test. Um, those who are in the military may be familiar with Stanine test because it was supposed to be basically uh, a background uh, test to find out what you really knew and uh, how well you could fit in with the learning processes. And I took the Stay 9 test with Flying Tigers, and they said I'd made the highest score they'd ever had on the Stay 9 test. And so they made me an offer the same day. And that was the end of the week, and so I told them, well, I'll let them know on uh, the next uh, Monday. So in the meantime, I'd put an application in with Western Airlines uh, for a mechanic. And at the same time, they were kind of uh, hesitant about hiring me, so I, I went to <laughs> every, uh, upper level interview, which was started with their vice president, then the manager interviewed me, manager of uh, maintenance. And so uh, then when I got down to the supervisor on the floor, the supervisor interviewed me and he liked what qualifications I had. So he says, well, I know you're not going to stay with us with the qualifications, but we'll use you while you stay. And so they hired me in as a mechanic. And so that lasted for about six months. And then they had the big hiring spring off for pilots. So of course I had all my pilot's licenses. Uh, and the only thing I needed was a flight engineer's license. So I took it upon myself to work nights and go to school during the day over in Burbank and uh, got my uh, certification for a flight engineer. Because at that time they had three um, persons in the cockpit. It was the captain, the co-pilot, and the flight engineer to handle all the mechanical things in flight. So that's basically where it started. So uh, from that point, um, I was always a, a person who liked people and I worked very well with people. So. I got into almost every uh, organization that they had in the airlines. Mm -hmm.